welcome back. Today we're going to look at a new piece of software for making data visualizations. Up till now we've been looking at Excel largely because this is something that is widely available but also widely used. And so in the past many people have said that they wanted to see how to make data visualizations in Excel because that's something they thought that they would be using in a career. However, even though Excel has gotten better over time, it's still not the best place to make high quality data visualizations. And you have to fight with the program to overcome many of its poorly chosen defaults. Because of this, we're gonna to move to a different platform that I think still has fairly poorly chosen defaults, but on the whole is easier to realize an excellent looking data visualization. In addition, it has a nice GUI interface and it can read data from files that we can update and manipulate data within and then have it automatically update into our plots. Another advantage, at least from a pedagogical perspective, is that the GUI interface gives us access visually to many of the options that we can use to modify our data visualizations. And that gives us a chance to explore in sort of a systematic way the different design choices that we can make. This piece of software is called Views. It's free and open source. It's developed by Jeremy Sanders and cross-platform, meaning that it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. To download it, you'll need to go to the website shown here. And there's also some information here, including a user manual, some example screenshots, and so forth. On the whole, the documentation is acceptable, but it is a little harder to read than what you would find for something like Excel. And so I'll be making videos to walk us through many of these processes. In this video, we're just gonna have a look at how to orient ourselves into the program. So let's assume that you have downloaded the program and installed it. The first time you open it, it'll look something like this. It might not look exactly like this, but I think in general, you should see something where you have menus across the top, you have a toolbar here, you have a second toolbar here, and then you have five windows. One that says editing, one that says properties, one that says formatting, one that says data, and then a fifth one in the middle that has our plot of interest. This is where we'll be able to see what it is that we're making. There are other windows that we could have and which we'll use, but first let's just orient ourselves a little bit and also change things around just slightly. I generally like the layout that we see on the left where we have editing and properties. Editing lets us look at the hierarchy of our visualization. And so I have a page by default, page one, and graph one. I also have a little arrow I can click. And if I click on this, you can see that graph one came preloaded with X and Y coordinates. And when I click on those, I now get something in the properties pane where I can control some of the behavior of the X and Y. If I click on graph, you'll see I have something just about notes where I can leave notes for myself in pages the same. So really we don't get access until we get down into the X and Y axis and until we start to make visualizations. And that's okay. So it's convenient for me to be able to click on these and then have access to them down here. And in future videos, we'll really be exploring what this does. But for now, let's leave this here. When we move to the right hand side, we have formatting. Again, if I click on one of these elements, what's going on in the formatting changes. Right now, we're set to alter the formatting of the Y axis. If I click on the graph, I get a different set of options over here. And there's a series of tabs, just like there would have been back when I click on these axes, a series of tabs. I have these arrows, which let me scroll for even more tabs. And again, future videos will explore what all of these mean. In general, this downward triangle in the formatting is the main formatting window. We also have options for page, and there we only have the main formatting window where we can do something like adjust the width and the height. And you can do this by either clicking and then selecting from here, or you can just type in what you need. For instance, maybe I want something that is five inches. You have to include the units or it won't recognize that. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about this. For instance, instead of inches, I could have centimeters. Instead of centimeters, I could have points, and it will be very, very narrow. But let's just go back to five inches. So in general, you'll be typing in both a value 
and a unit when we're thinking about things like size. You can also choose to hide elements in here. And so if I click on hide, then our page, or our graph, sorry, which we're editing has disappeared. Data, this data pane is something where we can see the data we've either generated inside of views or more often in this series of videos that we will have imported into views. I find that I generally don't use this data tab very much. It is really convenient to have it around for the times where I need to see what I'm doing or where my data is. But for the most part, I don't need access to it when I'm manipulating and controlling the design elements of the plot view. So let's go ahead and make it so that this isn't occupying so much screen real estate because I don't need to use it too, too much. To do this, what we can do is I can click and hold on the formatting window. And if I drag this, you'll see it pops out. I can move this around so that if I now moved it to the top and let go, formatting would be up here. I don't think that's very convenient, so I'm gonna grab this again. And you can see I could put it down below so that data is up top and formatting is down below. And just like most other programs, I can wait till I have this arrow that is double-sided and click and drag to resize. But again, I don't really want the data visualization here. Instead, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this off and then move it back over so that the entire window is highlighted and grayed out. Now when I let go, formatting occupies this entire window. And at the bottom, I have a new tab-based system where I can click on data and it brings up the data window. I like this because there's so many options for formatting that I like to see them all. If I look at something like the axes and click on some of these other values, you can see that there's a large number. And so I like having a long list where I can see everything at once. And then when I need to see data, I can just click here and look at it. So I find this very convenient. One thing that sometimes people do that I need to mention is that they accidentally close a window. For instance, they click on this X for DataViz, and now it's gone. And how do I get back to seeing this data window? Well, it's quite simple. I go to the top up here, the very top, where I have Views, File, Edit, View, Insert, Data, and I go to View, Windows, and I recheck on Data Navigator Window. And when I do that, it's come back to where it used to be. Something else that can happen is that people will click and drag and let go, and that's okay. You now just have a floating window that you can move around anywhere you want. I find this a little less convenient, so I do like it hidden away. So we'll just move this back here so that it has its own. I'm gonna move formatting so that it's to the left. I just happen to be used to it being that way, so this is gonna be a way I'm gonna to want to see. Another window that's going to be very useful for us later, but we don't quite need yet, is this console window. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on it because I always have it open. If you do something like fitting, it will open and close this automatically on you. I like having it open all the time so that I don't have to deal with that. And what this is, is a Python prompt. If you're familiar with using the Python interpreter, you'll recognize that. And so you can actually enter Python commands in here and have them realized up here or use it like a calculator. But something else that's nice about it is it will export information about processes that we have, such as fitting data. So I like to have it open here. You can choose to have it open or not now. Uh, and if you don't, just go ahead and click the X button here. Okay, I think that's really about it. The rest of this we will explore as we go forward. We'll be using a few of the tools up here. We'll be using in these different menus, but most of what we do actually happens in these bars here. We'll be doing things like importing data or exporting our graphics, setting up new things like scatter plots, or after we learn how to import data, making bar charts and exploring the formatting of those. But for now, that's really it. That's your orientation to views. It is going to feel a little bit more confusing than Excel because you're not used to using it. But I hope that you'll find that as you learn to use it, it's a program that has a lot of power to make beautiful and well-designed data visualizations. In fact, 
I personally think this is probably the best program out there making data visualizations because it makes beautiful images, it handles anti-aliasing well, and it handles interfacing with data quite well, as we will see. So for now, I say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video where we think about how to import data.